Hey guys, welcome back to the Second Time Lucky Mining Channel. In today's video, we are going to have a look at the top five questions that is asked around your flux node. If you've liked the video, please like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. That'll help me out a great deal. But enough of that, let's jump into the five questions. Now, specifically in this video, I wanted to have a look at the five most common questions that I see either on the Flux Discord or on the Sleep Money Club Discord. Hopefully, this would help new people with the typical issues or questions that they have around their Flux node. Now, jumping into the first question, and this is probably the one that gets asked the most, and that's why I wanted to start with that. Um, by the way, I'll leave timestamps at the bottom in case you wanted to skip to a specific question and what the answer is. But the most common question, at least in my opinion, is it goes something like this. I've got my node up for the last one day, two days, three days, five days, six days, um, or multiple days, and I haven't received the reward yet. So when am I going to get a reward? That is, in my opinion, the most asked question. Now, looking at the answer to that most common question is, the short version is you will get paid as soon as you are first in the queue. Now, how it actually works is, as soon as you stand up your node, you will go at the back of the queue, depending on the tier. Now, depending on the tier of node that you have between Cumulus, Nimbus, and Stratus, the queues might be longer or shorter. So currently, I think there's about 8,000 nodes in Cumulus, uh, about 2,000 in Nimbus, and about 1,600 or 1,700 in Stratus. So depending on the queue size you will be put at the back of the queue now what will happen is every time that there is a block the block reward will be given depending on the percentage or the tier that you are in to the person that is first in that specific queue so once that person gets paid they jump at the back of the queue so that's really how it works so every two minutes somebody will get paid and you will get paid as soon as you get to the front of the queue and that's really how it works now you can actually calculate that around a a general timing because as we know the block times are known so it's every two minutes so you can calculate depending on what your number is in the queue when are you going to get paid now a quick and dirty around how do i see that visually so you can go into zelcore and look at your node and it will show your rank and your rank is really where you are in the queue and another way to do it is there's a, a nice site that the community has created. Um, I'll leave a link in the video description and hopefully show you guys a screenshot what it looks like. But you can just put in your address and it will tell you more or less when are you gonna get paid. Now, looking at question number two and sticking with the rewards theme, it goes something like this. I've seen in my Zelcor wallet, it says flux dash token and it's got a mount or uh, when am I getting that? Or when am I getting my parallel assets? How do I get my parallel assets that I've mined from my flux node? So it goes something like that. Now, looking at the answer to the parallel asset claiming question, um, you know, what will happen is every time that you get paid or you receive a block reward, what will happen is you will receive a token of flux on a bunch of other chains. And that's really where that flux dash token comes from. So you will earn flux, a percentage of flux on another chain. Now, what happens today is that doesn't automatically come unfortunately into your Zelcor wallet so you will have to go through a process to actually physically claim that now two steps to that the first one is you know how do I see how much I've earned again it's in Zelcor you will see a token amount or what you can do is if you go to the fusion app at the top there's three buttons there and there's an option claim parallel asset and select the parallel asset you would like to claim and it will show you more or less what you have again there's a lot of clicks to that so it's not necessarily user friendly hopefully there's something in the future that makes it a little bit simpler but what i again like to do is that same community website that we talked about in question number one it actually shows you all the parallel assets that you've got and how much you've earned what you actually have claimed and what the fees are so that's actually the other important thing is around the fees so um, that's probably the other question that people ask but I'll, I'll not make it an official question but uh, what will happen is you won't be able to claim something in case the fees are more than what you want to claim so it makes common sense so if the fees are more than what it is then you just can't claim it so that is just something to take note of now in regards to actually claiming there's a ton of videos on YouTube to show you actually how to claim and again I've done one and I'll leave a link in the video description and tag it at the top here but you can go and have a look at that I think there's even one on TikTok 
Now jumping into question number three, and it's got the theme around your node being offline. And generally the question would be something like this. My node has been stable for the last three days and now all of a sudden it's offline, or this thing has been running for a month, two months, three months, doesn't matter the period, and now all of a sudden it's offline, or it's offline, I don't know why, and how do I go about fixing it? Now, answering the question around why your node is offline is a little bit more difficult or tricky because your node could be offline for a bunch of different reasons. And I'll have a look at probably the most common reasons here in, in this video, but I would really encourage you to either log a support ticket in case you're struggling too much or just go to the community tab in the Flux Discord, just post your question there and there will be a host of people that will help you. Most probably it would be Dev. Um, if you're in the Sleep Money Club, I'll definitely have a look and see if we can um, sort out your issue. Now, what I'd like to do, and it's probably not the best way, but you know, when my node is offline or I'm trying to help somebody which node is offline, I go through a process of elimination. So first I have a look at the hardware and then the software side and see you know, around the requirements, which requirements am I meeting? And in case I'm meeting it, I move on to the next requirement to ultimately figure out what's wrong. Now, the first thing that I would tell anybody around their node is make sure that you've got the watchdog installed because it will show you systematically every time that there is a benchmark or if there is an issue, it will actually show you what the issue is. So in case you haven't installed the benchmark yet, please do so. I've got a video specifically on it, so I'll leave a link in the video description and tag it at the top. But please install the watchdog because it will help you identify exactly when your node is experiencing some issues. Now, looking at the hardware side, I'll start with the EPS benchmark. So that is events per second. So it's really your CPU score. So you just need to make sure that your EPS score is consistently higher than what the minimum specification is, depending on the tier that you are in. And I've had issues with VPSs. I've had issues with my Raspberry Pi and even my computer upstairs. So if your EPS score is not high enough when the benchmark runs, um, you know, the first time it will not be an issue necessarily, but if it's continuously below, your node will go offline. The same goes for the DWS score. So that's the disk write speed. So that's really the SSD performance. So again, what will happen is you will need to be more consistently than what the minimum specifications are. And the usual suspect in that area is if you've got a Contabo VPS, um, you know, their DWS scores drop below the specifications every now and again. So if you're lucky, then it fixes itself and their SSD speeds goes up again. If you're not unlucky uh, or you are unlucky, what will happen is it will consistently be below and then your node will go offline. Now, the next two specifications on the hardware side is really the upload and download speed. So even though they are part of the specification, at least when I'm recording this video, they are not getting enforced. But if I was you, I would look into them now already and assume that they are enforced just to make sure that you are meeting the upload and download specification speeds. Now, the typical issues on the software side and the way that I like to look at it, and again, you know, this is just how I like to look at it. There might be a better way, but um, I like to look at it as two tiers. So the first one being the actual software that the Flux OS is installed on and then the Flux OS being the second tier. So the way, again, that I like to look at it or if I look at my normal PC is the first being Windows, um, you know, is my Windows updated? Um, and the next, if I'm using a specific application, is that application then updated that's running on Windows? So I like to look at it at those two tier systems. Now, to put that into practice on the Flux node, so obviously we install Flux on Ubuntu, and then the Flux OS would have a version, right? So it's, it's important to make sure that the Ubuntu operating system that you currently have got that Flux is installed on is up to date and it's got all the security patches and all of the, the versions that supports the components that Flux needs to run. So let's make sure that that is updated. And again, I've got a specific video on that. So I'll leave a link in the video description and tag it at the top, but it shows you around how do you do patching to make sure that that part is correct. And then the other component is there is a version of Flux OS. So Flux is a iterative um, process, so they continually improve Flux OS, so they'll improve updates and enable new features. I think the latest one is the geolocation one. And again, you know, they want to enable that for customers, so people that actually run uh, applications on Flux. So obviously they will then enforce that specific 
version and you know they'll tend to be one version behind of what the latest one is uh, from an enforcement perspective so it's important to keep your flux os up to date again because that will be enforced so that is typically the two reasons that i see around nodes going offline is the software side on ubuntu is not updated or is um, more updated than what is supported so i see that quite a lot where people are installing ubuntu 22 uh, version 22 instead of 20 um, on their vps um, or on their bare metal which is not supported i think the the database is an issue so it's important that you look at what is the specifications making sure at the ubuntu site you've got the correct version and you're doing patching and then on the flux os side again if you've got the watchdog and that's why i hammer on the watchdog it will tend to do it automatically um, you know if you don't you can force it so um, you know you can force update the flux os and in case none of that is working so either the watchdog didn't do it and forcing it doesn't work there's a couple of commands that is in the flux discord that would work that hasn't worked for me personally so um, you know what i just do i just do a quick reinstallation and again that's generally not long it's about between 30 minutes and an hour depending on how quick uh, the internet connection is and the hardware that you're installing it on but that's generally how i go about fixing the offline status again going through it from my hardware specifications um, and meeting the benchmarks and then going on to the software side question number four normally goes something like this i've managed to install a flux node and it's been going great but i now want to install another one either on the same computer or on something different or on a vps or on the same vps so it's really about installing a second flux node now to answer that question is really simple the answer is yes um, so you can absolutely install more than one flux node on a computer that being a vps or being a computer at home that you're running or in your garage or wherever you're running your flux node so you can absolutely do that in fact if you're running bare metal here at home i think the limit today is eight nodes so you can install up to eight nodes now the trick with this question is though you will need to meet the cumulative requirements around the benchmarks and what that means or in simple terms is you know if the requirement if i just take uh, cumulus node for example the requirements let's say is eight gigabytes of ram right so you've already got a computer you've got your flux node installed and it, it's it's got a dedicated eight gigs of ram you cannot share your second node will not work if you share that same eight gigabytes of ram with this with the second node on the same computer right so each node would need to have its own hardware that is dedicated specifically to them and there's lots of software that you can use to divvy up hardware like that so um, stuff like proxmox or the oracle vm uh, box you can use that on windows to separate hardware specifically to a virtual machine so there's lots of ways that you can actually do that and you can do that either on a bare metal computer and again lots of people do that and a lot of people that's way smarter than i am do that and you can even do that on a vps so i've seen people um, do that with hetzner where they get a dedicated server and then split that server up in multiple nodes so you can absolutely do more than one node on a computer but the crux there is you need to meet the hardware requirement for each one of the nodes individually talking of nodes and discord i've recently joined the sleep money club started by your friend andy and colin the decade investor it's really a discord community of like-minded individuals striving to increase their passive income there's a ton of content in there around various different subjects that i don't even understand around nfts nodes as a service yield farming property market stock market mining helium all of these different cryptocurrency and non-cryptocurrency things in there in case you are interested um, or to want to check it out i'll leave a link in the video description now the last question goes something like this i've had a look on a lot of youtube videos it just looks too hard for me or i don't think i can install a flux node because you need to be an it expert i've never seen linux before um, i don't think i can do it or i've actually tried on my computer or on a vps i just can't get it right now what do i do now 
Now answering the last question, in case you didn't even try to install a flux node, I would really encourage you to try. Um, yes, I do know it is daunting, especially for people that are not IT savvy or some people just don't like doing that, right? So, and I totally do get it, but in case, that is you are interested in that i would really encourage you number one if you don't want to make the investment around the the amount of coins that you need on the live environment is to try the test net um, you know flux does have a test net it actually works i've done it a ton of times um, i did it to test my hardware and making sure i understand the process how to install a flux node so that's really what it is there for right so um, in the discord channel there's instructions around what do you need to do to get these test coins and then there's a specific test net that you can go ahead and install so again it's great for number one testing your hardware to make sure it meets the specifications so i would highly encourage you to do that and the other one is uh, it takes you through the actual process of what you would do in any way right so it's a, a good learning opportunity on the test net now if the test net is still too hard for you and you don't want to do that the second option or at least what i look at is the second option is some of the vps providers and some of the vps providers actually makes it a lot simpler so you don't need to know any linux commands all that you need to do is secure your spot with a vps provider and provide them the collateral information so your uh, collateral id zell id all of those type of things that you would normally need you just provide them that details and they will set up the node specifically for you so they make it a lot easier you don't need to do anything really is just provide the collateral details and they will set up your hardware so that's really another option specifically for you now the last option, at least in my opinion, and there's one more and I'll mention it, but I wouldn't encourage people to, to actually go and do that. But the last option in my opinion is Project Titan, which is around the corner. And that is the functionality that will be enabled to allow you to stake from within Zellcore. So you will, your collateral will be locked up though, but it will allow you to actually stake and participate in a node. I think that will be in the Stratus tier, but that'll allow you to at least um, you know, earn some flux from staking from within Zalcor. So that'll make it a lot easier for people. I suspect there might be a cap on there. So just have a look out when the official information is released around what the particulars are. But, you know, that'll be another option specifically for you. Now, technically, the last option, and again, you shouldn't really be doing this, or I don't encourage you to do this, is Coin Metro. So I know Coin Metro allows you to stake your flux from within their exchange, but the old saying, not your keys, not your crypto, and especially what's going on, um, you know, with exchanges at the moment, where some of the exchanges are stopping people from withdrawing, I would really not encourage you to send your flux there or stake from within exchange um, you know you can do the same functions yes i know it's a, a bit more work but it's it's doable right so project titan will allow you to do that within zalcor that's probably going to be the easiest um, or you can set up a node again that's a little bit harder but not impossible um, and then you know some again some of these vps providers uh, you know makes it a lot simpler for you so those are a lot of alternatives that allows you to keep your crypto so again it's with your keys so it's your crypto so that in my opinion is a lot more safer and what you should really be doing that's it for this one guys if you've enjoyed the video please like the video and consider subscribing to the channel if you didn't please specify in the comments what you would like me to change otherwise i'll catch you in the next one cheers